Come on. So I've got the great pleasure of introducing uh, Philippe Carpus. Uh, he is a professor at the Federal University of Pampa in Brazil. South Ameri he's the South American um, representative in the Executive Council of the International Society of Biomechanics. His research group investigates the production and regulation of movements and application of this information to training and rehabilitation. COP is also dedicates to help different groups across the world to establish biomechanics research groups, such as our one in South Africa, and then the organization of new biomechanics societies in EDC. So thank you very much, Philippe, uh, and over to you. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Um, well, good, great pleasure to talk about uh, this topic here today, considering that we are Maybe the first time that we are all over the world in the very similar condition regarding education. And there are so many particular uh, characteristics from our places that you, you need to take in account when organize our lectures. And today I will talk a little bit about our experience um, aiding asynchronous activities to the remote learning. And we hope that uh, soon we can go back to the regular classes. Uh, I don't know what you think, but in my case, I'm missing so much the person-to-person -person activities, including the lectures. But we we'll try to do the best at, uh, what you can uh, in this condition. So please, 2020, hold on for a little. And well, I teach biomechanics for physical education and physiotherapy students. The regular classes, it's a 45 hours course over 17 weeks. So we have three hours per week uh, in classes, including 25 for physiotherapy uh, course and 50 students for physical education. In the regular course, I mean the face-to-face, the, the, -face, the, the normal, uh, uh, normal uh, class. I have four main activities in the lectures that the face-to-face -face classes, the lab activities, the, a research project, and an um, educational game. And for the remote uh, course, we, we are adapting the, um, the activity in, four, in five blocks. The first one we call on-demand lectures, that's uh, an asynchronous uh, activity, online live meetings, and then you have the homemade experiments, research project, and the biome biomechanics Olympic Games. These three last activities combine sometimes synchronous and asynchronous activities. I will quickly show each one of these activities. So the first one, the on-demand lectures. We have a website. Well, we, we, all, we all know that most of the universities have resource to, to online uh, teaching, like the Modo system, the Google suite um, options. But I don't know, sometimes I just like to create something that I can truly manage and change, not depending on someone else. So we create a Google site where you put all information for the lectures and the on-demand videos for the lectures are available on our YouTube channel. Uh, we call the Neuromac TV. So if you want to take a look later. And the students can found um, 20 classes that we call introductory classes to the biomechanics course and the videos are available uh, in the YouTube. But for the students, uh, I can also make the videos available offline. We, well, it was mentioned before about the, the, the access to the internet. Sometimes it's just easier to the students to download all the material and they can watch uh, as the, uh, when they want at home, for example. So this is the case here for, for the on-demand. And then you have the online, the online live meetings that include public uh, sessions to discuss some general topics related to the biomechanics uh, course. 
And we do this public because we, we consider that one, one interesting thing of the remote learning is that we are sharing much more than before. So sometimes you can invite a colleague to discuss, to participate in your class, to teach something to the students as well. And the private sessions, including those tools already mentioned in this event, the breakthrough, breakthrough rooms, the pools, whiteboard, and then you can have a more close uh, contact with the students. There's a lot of different options to, to use for these uh, online live sessions. In our university, we have the Google Suite uh, add-on, so you can use the Google Meet and all the related uh, tools. But I, I also like to use the Zoom, um, um, the Zoom room, let's say, to, to the class. The big challenge, in my opinion here, is to promote the engagement of the students and also some kind of equality on the access to the information, but also in the, uh, for the understanding, because it's very hard to get the feedback from the students when you cannot see their faces and talk close uh, to them. So I consider that this remote learning condition here, it's a kind of emergency condition. I'm not planning to replace any, other, any of the face-to-face -face activities. And I think, yes, the remote activity can help, can be a complementary tool, but we cannot just normalize uh, this for our classes. I have so many difficulties to, 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 to do that. So maybe I, I think some of you also have the similar impression. And then the block of combination of asynchronous and synchronous activities, the homemade experiments, research projects, and the educational game. So this, this educational game combining all these activities emerged from the difficulty of the students to follow the topics of the lectures. So what do most students expect when they come to the biomechanics class? Sometimes they just expect a lot of mathematics and data and graphs and well you know quite well but also they have a hope for hands-on in my case i teach biomechanics for students from the first year in the physiotherapy school and they they used to, to tell me that when they start a biomechanics course the first moment they feel that they will work with the physiotherapy concept. I mean, they will touch someone, they will measure, they will get, get data, they will discuss some clinical case or something like that. And now we don't have this. We don't have, we cannot do these activities in the lab. These images and videos are from our uh, classes uh, from the past years. So it's a biomechanics lab. You do real time measurements, we ca calculate some variables, we discuss concepts. But it's very hard to, to do this uh, remote because it's not easy to, to do a homemade experiment. We have some good tools already mentioned in this, in this event. They can do some calculate, calculations at home. They can, they can compare to data from one scientific paper or something like that. You can use uh, a paper describing the kinematics of the squat, and then you can use the the mobile applications and Kinovea and others, other applications to, to do the measurements in some, someone from his own family, and then he can compare the data. But it's, it's not the same because you don't share with the other students. And sometimes in the class, there's a lot of learning when the students start to, start to discuss together. And in the remote learning, this is more difficult. But it happens also in the face-to-face -face class, these difficulties. So nine years ago, we start to combine the synchronous and synchronous activities to improve the participation of the students in the classroom and also to improve the understanding about the applications of biomechanics and also to promote uh, abilities and skills to communicate, to share knowledge, to to, to, popular, to promote science popularization. 
and the students give us very good feedback. They used to say that the, this kind of activity I described helps to motivate out of the class study and also interaction between the students and, and also to find additional material to, to, to study at home. So we described this method in a paper we published a couple of years ago. And basically, we organized the class in small teams, and they have specific tasks to perform during the semester, during the course. You can, well, you can, we can change the tasks, we can adapt, we can reduce the number, we can increase the number of the tasks, but each one has a specific purpose that include homemade experiments, the development of a research project, write a, pre, a research project, and by write a, pro, a research project, I mean learn a little bit about how to construct a uh, research question, and how to propose a uh, hypothesis, and how to define how to test this hypothesis. Of course, we cannot include now the activities they develop in the community because one of the tasks is to go out of the university and tell people about biomechanics. So they go to public places, they talk about the impact on running, they, they talk about the influence of movement speed on force production. They talk about uh, risks of falls in elderly. We cannot do this uh, anymore. We can adapt, but people, the kind of people they reach when they go out of the university is not the kind of people that are online looking for videos or something like that. So the, the, the public will be totally different. They don't have to adapt. But other options, other activities can keep going, like um, session for creative thinking. We, we do some educational games that you do in the classroom. So now we can, we can do this online using uh, tools like those presented by Sara. Uh, we can do some short uh, journal clubs with the students. We can also do some mentoring sessions to help them in the construction of the research project. And we can also keep them motivated to develop some activities like one of our more, how can I say, it's a very nice activity. They have to create some artistic manifestation of biomechanics. It can be a music, it can be a, a pint, it can be a, a, a sculpture, I don't know what, it can be anything they want to show how a biomechanics concept can be applied in daily life. So this kind of activities we still can do during the remote learning because you do this during the regular face-to-face -face classes. They work out of the university. They hope they, hope they work at they, their homes to develop these activities. And a good thing is that sometimes people, people is really, really, uh, um, worried about what is the impact of aiding these asynchronous activities to learning. But so far what we found, including a lot of asynchronous activities to the regular classes, is that it is not bad for the, for the learning. I mean, they you have good um, outcomes in the exams. Um, we got a better, how can I say, a better uh, performance of the, the students in the read, writing exams. Well, it's not bad for them. It's not commit their, their, their um, learning by, adding, by including these asynchronous activities to the, to the class, to the, to, the, to, the, to the course, sorry. And in the end of the day, we can select some of, some of these activities to keep going during the, the pandemic period. So here I just keep some of the images that we still can do. I mean, we can, we can work creating this kind of uh, 
conceptual maps or the inactivity of creative thinking, they still can create videos and online material to, 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 to show uh, content of biomechanics. They, they can work together because asynchronous means not with the teacher face to face, even by the webcam, but they can go together online using other tools. So they can use Google Meet or other tools they want to talk and to discuss the, the, the problems that we mentioned in the class and how to develop uh, the solutions. I'm not, I will not talk about uh, evaluation here, but there is a, um, a method to evaluate the, the team work. And to, the, to, to, to finish my presentation, I would just remember that these three last activities that we propose, organizing the students and the small teams working together, having to present not only papers or data, for the, the, the other colleagues, but also discuss questions, participate in live sessions. They are asynchronous activities. They can be used during this pandemic period, but we also consider this, that this kind of approach can be successful, successfully implemented for a regular face-to-face -face classes. And particular for the course that I, I teach, 45 hours, it's, it's not enough to show the main topics of biomechanics. So if you engage them to keep working with the biomechanics, to keep studying biomechanics topics outside of the class in additional times, so we kind of increase the time of exposition of these students to the, to the biomechanics concept. It's not easy to, to, to run this educational project by yourself, I mean alone. So I used to involve students from our research lab as well. At least two students are always helping with the development of the activities over the course. And they really like, they really want to participate. I mean, I'm not, I know you have to. I just ask them and they, they like to, to be involved. So if you want to include more asynchronous activities to your classes, maybe having some assistant, I don't know, if, depending on, what, on where you are in your university, how it works, but here we can have some students to support the classes so they can help. And sometimes they, they can do very well with these online tools and create a material for the students and also communicate it with the students. So just to re register the thank you for the students helping in this um, challenge. And I just invite everyone to also visit the, bi the Brazilian Biomechanics uh, Society website. It's a great pleasure to represent the society here today. And well, thank you for your attention. I, I, I hope the video and sound was okay. Thank you. Thanks, Philippe. Uh, it went all well. So, uh, we have any questions for, for Philippe? Got some comments on the side, but it's got to do. Johan's asking about how to get around um, the face to face. It's very hard to, to teach when, you, when you're not face to face. And then Sarah responded saying that you can um, use an iPad and use a pen tool on there to make a whiteboard easier. And also another option is using a document reader, or even pointing a webcam onto a piece of paper to write on. And um, then Johan also asked, Philippe, at what level do you implement this approach? For in the physiotherapy school, they are first year students. So they, they are just starting the course. In Brazil, physiotherapy course have five years. So they are on five, first year. And the physical education, they are being the beginning of the second year. Okay, so they're quite early on in the, in the degree. Is there any other questions? Thanks, Dr. Mohamed, for, for all of your comments and your, your great feedback. Um, 
Anything else? All right, so we're not so bad on time. Just yeah. slightly eight, eight minutes over, not bad at all. So thank you again, once again, to all of our speakers. Absolutely been helpful. And I hope we can all use one or two of these or even all of them to apply in our own teaching. And then Philippe, I'll uh, put it back onto you to, to say the, the farewells and goodbyes. Uh, well, there, I, I just got one question here about how, how much uh, calculation I teach for the students. Uh, not much. And for the remote learning, I'm not going so deep in the calculations be, because I'm afraid of losing the students. This is the truth. For the face-to-face -face classes, I go a little bit deeper in two-dimensional kinematics, for example and then explain some calculation a little more details. But for the remote learning, by fear of losing the students, I will keep it easy for the calculations. I don't know if it will be right or not. Let's see. 